Ellis wants us to rethink the way that we look at the Earth's ecosystems and rewrite our textbooks in the process. What you conventionally get in a textbook, you're going to most likely see a map of biomes. And those biomes are going to be, for example, tropical rainforests or grasslands or deserts. And if you're lucky, you might have one that includes urban areas, but probably not. Together with McGill University professor Navin Ramankutty, Ellis proposed a radically new way to see the planet's ecosystems. Instead of biomes, he's calling them anthromes, taking humans into account and how we fundamentally altered the planet. Really, if you look at the biosphere the way it is today, it's not that way at all. It's essentially a system that's already been transformed by human activity into these kind of more complex types of mixed systems. Existing biome classification systems are based on factors like plant structures, leaf types, and climates. The World Wildlife Fund's ecological land classification system identifies 14 major biomes. They're thinking about this kind of extensive area where you have, you know, one thing, like forests. And the first thing you recognize when you look at the world, not just at, at, at biomes, is that everything's broken up by human activity. And you could look at this as a very simple world where you have agricultures in one place and forests in another place and cities in another place. But in reality, it's all mixed together. Ellis's model lists 18, most of which are anthropogenic and include dense settlements, rice villages, populated forests and wild forests, to name a few. They were mapped using data obtained through remote sensing imagery and agricultural statistics as well as a population model developed by the U.S. Geological Survey. Most ecologists have long been aware of man's impact on the environment, so the concept isn't exactly new. But the proposal to map these ecosystems and study their biodiversity is. I've been working in, in China studying the ecology of ancient agricultural systems there. And I got interested in the idea of sustainable agriculture. How can we sustain crop yields over the long term? And I felt that we didn't know enough about how a system would behave over the long term to understand it. And that led me to see just how much change is going on at such a large scale, you know, caused by basically a lot of, a lot of people interacting with a lot of land. It's a controversial proposal that has generated some criticism, especially from conservation groups and ecologists who believe it could diminish the importance of protecting pristine habitats. Ellis, for his part, disputes that claim. In this century, we need to change the way that we educate our children about the biosphere, about the ecology of the world. We need to think of it as a human ecology, ecology in which people interact with nature and that we're responsible for the way that nature behaves now and it will be, will be responsible for the way it, it, it behaves in the future. And if we want to live in an environment that's desirable for all of us, it's, it's up to all of us to make that happen. It's not going to happen out there somewhere. It's really the nature around us that, that matters now. For Discovery News, I'm Jorge Ribas.